Are you tempted by the Tempus? Hi guys, Chris here, and you're watching Here We Are Running, and today we're doing a shoe review of this, the Saucony Tempus, a performance stability running shoe. Performance and stability don't normally go in the same sentence, but with this shoe, they just might. Now I've run a, around 100 miles or 160 kilometers in this shoe. I'm gonna give you a full rundown of the shoe, all the stats, all the figures, and then we'll come on and I'll tell you about what I think of it. Now, as is a stability running shoe review, the place I always like to start is how they actually provide and support from this shoe. And gone is the chunk of plastic that Saucony used to stick on the medial side of their shoes to sort of stop the foot from turning inwards. A very different approach to stability is taken on the Tempus. It's using power run midsole foam to create a frame around your foot that your foot really sort of sits into. And it's that frame that is giving you the support and stopping the foot moving too much one side to the other as you land. But they've not just used power run midsole foam, they've also introduced power run PB midsole foam, which is a much more sort of lighter weight, bouncy midsole foam. And that's giving it some of the performance that this shoe has. Moving on to the upper, and it's a very thin, lightweight material that they've used for this upper. Very breathable. It's got some overlays to give it a bit of structure. You've got a semi-gusted tongue, an internal heel counter, and a bit of padding around the ankle area. And for those that like their heel tabs, this is an elasticated heel tab here at the back. On the outside, you can see it's got rubber there. That's called XT900 rubber. In the areas that you need it, and then in between, you've got quite a lot of exposed midsole foam. The shoe fits true to size, and in my UK size 11, it weighs 295 grams. Now for me, anything less than 300 grams, uh, and that's really quite light. Most of my other shoes that are stability running shoes are, are all over the 300 gram mark. So 295 grams for a UK size 11, I'm liking that. It's got an eight mil heel to toe drop. Again, that's perfect for me. And in terms of how much it costs, well, it's 165 recommended retail price here in the UK. In the US, it's $160, and in Europe, it's 190 euros. But you can get it for lower than that. In fact, I paid 150 pounds for this shoe, but I've seen it advertised for even less than that. So how have I been finding the temper since I've been running in it? As I mentioned, I'm approaching 100 miles in it now. I've done short distances all the way up to half marathons, including a half marathon race in the shoe. I found it a really comfortable shoe, no matter what the distance I'm running, and it's certainly a good long run shoe. Uh, the one thing I did try in it, which I didn't get on too well, I did, I did try a little bit of speed work in the shoe. I, I didn't find it was the best shoe for that, despite the fact that it is bouncy, it is springy, and you can, you can kind of go longer, faster over a longer distance in the shoe, but for those shorter distance interval sessions, for me anyway, it didn't work too well. But for the rest of the time I've been wearing the shoe, um, yeah, a really comfortable ride. You certainly feel the springiness from that Power Run PB midsole foam that they've introduced. And the fact that it is lighter than the other shoes in my rotation certainly helps when you want to go a little bit faster over those longer distances. 
But how stable is this shoe? Because it is offering stability in a different way. Well, I'll let you judge for yourself. Here's me on the treadmill with the footage slowed down so that you can kind of see how my uh, pronation is working wearing the Saucony Tempus. I do love the look of the shoe, uh, obviously a personal thing, but yeah, for me, like the bright colors, like the design of it. Um, it. These overlays do do a little bit of a funny thing when you are actually landing on the forefoot area and bending your foot. Uh, you might see that from the footage on the screen now. It hasn't really impacted the way I run in the shoe, but it does sort of bring the upper inwards, I would say, a little bit. Not a problem, but just an observation. Now, something to watch out for as I run more in the shoe is the durability that I'm getting from it, particularly the midsole foam. It's obviously springy and bouncy at the moment, but how's it gonna be after another few hundred miles run in the shoe? We'll have to wait and see for that one. The other area though is on the outsole and the grip on the outsole is performing well at the moment, no signs of wear except for this area up here. Now I am seeing some wear, some of the treads wearing down there on the outside of the heel area of the shoe, obviously to do with where I'm landing, perhaps I'm heel striking a little bit on that area, but that's gonna be something I'm looking out for and see how long that that will last. So to summarize, I really enjoy running in this shoe. I, I love the fact that they're providing that stability in a different way, a less traditional way, a more natural way, I would say, and also the fact that they introduced the Power Run PB midsole foam that's giving you that extra bounce, uh, a bit of springiness, and some additional energy return to your runs. So it's certainly a shoe that I'm gonna be running in plenty more during the rest of this year. And it could, it could even be my top stability running shoe for 2022. But you'll have to come back to the channel and wait and see for when I uh, produce a video on my top shoes. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please do give it a thumbs up, hit that like button, and if you're new around here, then why not consider subscribing for plenty more running content. But for now, guys, goodbye.